Well, the first thing I'd like to do is I really like to thank everybody for coming, <laughs> taking the time to come down and listening to what we have to say here. But I really try and explain to people that yoga is a really broad topic today that it kind of reminds me of the subject of mathematics under the heading of mathematics on one end you've got arithmetic and the other end you've got calculus and so under the heading of yoga on one side you can have somebody who goes for a weekend intensive comes back a certified yoga teacher mm -hmm. And then the other side of that is you have people who have systems for attaining enlightenment. I think one of the biggest things is, is a lot of people really don't understand what yoga is. And yoga was explained to me very simplistically many, many years ago by a Swami Rama in Honesdale, Pennsylvania. And he explained it to me in about six minutes, and it took me about 20 years to figure it out. But he said, you train your mind to look for spirit, and you train your body to receive the image. Pretty simple. Yoga is union. Union of the individual with the divine. Now, there's a big, I don't know, debate about, is yoga a religion? And my whole thing is, is that yoga comes out of Hinduism. The word religion means to relink, and yoga means union. I think it's two ways of saying the same thing. But the problem is, is that we don't know what either one of them are supposed to do anymore. That the institutions that have taken over our religions have failed so badly that we don't have a good model anymore. And even, say, for example, the whole yoga community today, I mean, people think yoga is putting your foot on your head. And we're missing the, the important part of the whole thing is it's the union of the individual with the divine. And with this concept comes, I don't know if you're familiar with this term, it's called apotheosis. Have you ever heard that word, apotheosis? Mm -hmm. What I think is really interesting is if, if you've ever been to the Capitol building in Washington, D.C., that the fresco that covers the dome is called the apotheosis of Washington. And apotheosis is the process of the individual becoming divine. And that process does have an evidence procedure and it parallels the metamorphosis of a butterfly. See, butterflies aren't born butterflies, they're born caterpillars. Caterpillars are insects in the larvae state, they do nothing but indulge. The characteristics of the human in the larvae state, we're careless, we're emotional, we're indulgent, we're excitable. Well, that pretty much defines life in America. Now, a caterpillar doesn't wake up one morning and say, where do these wings come from? Caterpillars go into a chrysalis. In the chrysalis, the caterpillar shuts off the instincts and the appetites of the body. The characteristics of the human in the chrysalis state, you're careful, you're intelligent, you're ambitious, but you're abstinent. You're struggling with the things you were craving in the larvae state. Now, if my choices were a caterpillar or chrysalis, I would choose caterpillar every time. Who wants to go through the dark night of the soul? Who wants to undertake the labors and the task of the hero? For what? But from the chrysalis, the caterpillar emerges as a butterfly. Now the butterfly has options that the caterpillar doesn't. Butterflies, if they want, they can crawl around on the ground, but if they want, they can fly. They can access another medium, another dimension of reality, and navigate through it. The characteristics of the human in the adult state, we're carefree, we're wise, we're liberated, we're enthusiastic. Now, on the surface, careless, emotional, indulgent, and excitable can be mistaken for carefree, wise, liberated, and enthusiastic because we don't sprout wings. 
With regard to the actual experience, though, there's no comparison. But the unfortunate thing is, is that you can't go from careless, emotional, indulgent, and excitable to carefree, wise, liberated, and enthusiastic without this middle piece. Now, yoga is the middle piece. When it was codified, when it was written down, it was done so in eight essential stages. Now, what we're going to do here today is what they call asana, which is a module. It's one of these eight stages, but it's not yoga. And these eight essential stages are what make up yoga. The physical exercise, the whole intention here, it's not about getting your hand to the floor. It's not about getting your foot on your head. It's all about getting this image in your body that your body will now receive what it really does need, your number one need, as a symbol that will now produce the feeling in it that I'm happy, I'm special, I'm good enough. Because when you do that, matter and mind will come together with new information. Now the biggest barrier to this whole process is physics. It's like attracts like, and two things can't occupy the same space at the same time. Now, because our bodies have a pattern, we look for food, mother, and approval, we have to purify the body. You have to purge the body of its dependency on this external source of sustenance. That's Om Purna Mara Purna Midam Purna Purna Mudashate Purna Sya Purna Maria Purna Meva Vashishate